So the wife wants a divorce and is never coming back. Yeah, whatever. You know what that means? You now have plenty of time to make something in your forge this weekend. Now, in order for your Gladius to aid you in restoring glory to the Eternal City, it needs to be strong. Or maybe you made something more useful. Regardless, increasing the strength of a product you just made in your backyard is important. You don't want that new connecting rod you just cast to break the second the engine is turned over, do you? Well, hardening aluminum falls into two general categories, heat treatable and non-heat treatable aluminum alloys, for both of which I will discuss procedures that can add hardness to the material. To work hardened aluminum, the crystal lattice that makes up the part must be deformed in some way. This deformation increases the amount of energy required to further deform the material by preventing the crystal lattice from shifting past each other. The simplest way to work hard in the cast is to take a ball peen hammer and dimple the surface of the part. If looks are a concern, then sand the dimpling smooth. The effect of work hardening will still be apparent in the material. However, care must be given to not allow the material to heat up during the sanding, as this will anneal the material. I will discuss this in more detail later, but as a general rule, if it's too hot to hold with bare hand, it may be getting uh, hot enough to cause annealing. Something to note about this process is that the increase in strength is not uniform. On thick regions of your cast, the internal metal may be relatively soft. This can be avoided by using a press to deform the whole section of aluminum. However, this process can't be used in casting and is also rather expensive. If buying aluminum that has been work hardened, it is typically classified with the letter H, followed by two numbers x being 1 through 3 and a number y, indicating the degree to which it has been hardened, 2 being 25% uh, hardened, 8 being 100% hardened, and 9 being extra hardened. Alloying a metal with another enhances the physical properties of the base metal by interfering with the crystal lattice formed by the base metal. Ideally, these contaminants would be dispersed evenly throughout the whole of the alloy in question after casting. However, this does not always occur. The why is uh, not completely understood, but may have something to do with the varying solubilities of the solute, which would be the alloying metal, based on temperature. So as the metal cools, the solute will move towards the hotter and thus more soluble center of the material, leaving the exterior of the metal relatively pure and soft. To homogenize the alloy, it is typically heated to below its melting point and cooled slowly. This creates a product with an even hardness throughout. The process of homogenizing can only be performed on alloys with zinc, copper, or a silicon magnesium blend. Precipitation hardening, also known as age hardening, is a common practice in cast aluminum production. Due to complex physics and metallurgical reasons beyond my pay grade, the minor components will naturally, over time, form structures within the metal that increases its hardness. This process occurs naturally at room temperature in a period of about a day to sometimes years. However, some alloys take longer to reach its potential hardness than others. That is where the process of artificial aging can come in. To artificially age a piece, it must be placed at an elevated temperature, about 200 to 400 degrees F, for roughly 24 hours. The specifics for each alloy can be found online, because I'm going to guess not many people have a LNL special ADC 813 dual chamber aluminum heat treatment furnace, you know, chilling at home. A stainless steel General Electric JB645 induction oven will suffice for the purpose of heat treating the metal. Hardening a metal is great and all, but there are other aspects to a material's strength. Resisting plastic deformation is described by hardness, but toughness is the measure by which a material will resist cracking when a force is exerted on it. These properties must be taken into account when making a cast aluminum product. On that note, another heat treatment process aluminum alloys will go undergo is annealing. Annealing can fix issues that may arise from forging or casting, like uh, warping. If whatever you've cast for some reason is, is warped or bent out of shape, you can anneal it and that'll help fix that. 
and annealing will reduce the hardness gain from strain hardening or work hardening. The process to anneal aluminum is similar to homogenizing in that it must be heated to somewhere between 500 and 800 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. More if the part is particularly thick and then cooled slowly in air. Now if you want to learn more, much of the information for this video came from the book Metallurgy for the Non-Metallurgist, and it's quite an interesting book. It is kind of expensive, so if this is a, a hobby for you guys, I would recommend picking up that book. It's, it's definitely worth a read. Now thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something, and you did consider liking and subscribing. Now get casting.